Good afternoon, it's Willow here. I'm out um, gold prospecting with um, our work. Um, I've gone in two different directions, just having a look, um, hopefully to find perhaps a piece or two. This is actually a um, clump of vine barks, which is a um, often an indicator tree for um, gold here in the um, Victorian gold fields. But so far I've only dug a, dug a bit of junk. Um, this morning I had some pretty good success. I found two pieces, one that looks to be over a gram, but we've got to weigh it. Weigh it. Um, so we'll do that when we get back to camp tonight. So yeah, it's been quite a good day, although this afternoon is, um, I'm not finding as much. But that's always the way, you know, you've just got to keep um, on looking and digging. But I'll start to film this um, movie because you never know, I might be able to find something of interest on the way back to the car. Well this is the result so far of my detecting today. This is the two pieces of gold I found. Um, pretty pleased. The larger one could be um, over a gram in weight. Um, fortunately I haven't got anything with me to actually sort of compare the size um, with but it's quite a nice piece of gold and I'm very happy with it and um, you know typically the um, smaller piece is probably more typical sort of pieces you find today but um, anyway um, it's not bad for today's work so far yeah, see the quite sort of sharp pieces so they obviously had come virtually straight out of the reef on which they'd formed anyway hopefully we'll find some more stuff soon One of the things about gold prospecting is you've got to keep in mind the um, thickness of the soil that you're detecting in. If it's too deep, the gold sinks out of depth and you won't actually detect it with your detector. So I'm actually heading up this hill here. You can see just up there, it's about sort of um, 50 metres away, just to find some shallower soil to try and dig in. I dug a 22 um, shot case um, bullet shell um, just a short time ago, which is a pretty typical find here in the gold fields. I'm not going to dig, do a dig here. This is actually a live dig, but this is... You can probably hear the detector going off. This is very typical of the sort of stuff you've got to dig in the gold fields, but we'll see what it is. It's always not easy. Often these sorts of rubbish targets are a shallow. Let's see what it is. That's actually still in the hole. We'll see how it goes. The soil's quite hard, so it's actually quite hard digging with one hand and <laughs> trying to work out the camera of the other. I think it's come out of the hole now. Let's see if we can find it. it tends to go a bit bizarre. Sorry about the mucking around here. I'm just trying to turn the noise down a bit. So it doesn't go so berserk. So I think the target's somewhere in here. Now that's very typical of what you find. It's a 22 um, casing. But that's what set that off. It's amazing how much loud noise it makes. Okay, on to the next target. One other thing, it's always very important to fill the hold and in the gold fields and try and restore the place to as good a nick as possible because um, some um, obviously environmentalists don't like it when they see holes all over the place and I don't blame them so it gives the hobby a bad name but if you take a bit of care then everyone will be able to still um, detect for you. 
Well, there's lots of little subtleties here in the old gold fields. And being spring, there's a number of native flowers that are out. I always find it, even though I really love detecting, I also just enjoy having a good look around at the bush and, and um, photographing these little things that you can often sort of step over. Nice. Just a closer shot of these um, native flowers here. I've got a good friend Ross who'd be able to identify them if he was around, but unfortunately he's not here. There's a piece of quartz there. I wanted to show you something you should keep an eye out for here in the gold fields in Victoria. These are really bad news. These ants. They are very big and they actually vigorously attack you if you disturb them too much and um, people actually think they're worse than snakes they come out in there you can see the size of them and they will come out and attack if they feel threatened they have got a very painful sting so keep an eye out for these fellows when you're out in the bush I'm sure virtually most people who've been in the gold fields are aware of these fellas. Ray's found an old bottle, a Marchant's. It's got a pedal steamer wheel on the front here. And what's interesting about it is it's actually got an internal thread in the, um, the top. I've never seen a bottle with an internal thread quite like that. Normally it's obviously it's external. But we're not sure how old it is. Um, but yeah, I reckon it's a great find. Um, I'll no doubt someone on the forum will like it when they hear about it. It might be worth something, you don't know. But not a bad find. Just passing a whole lot of grass trees here. They're a very ancient type of Australian plant. That's quite a good stand of them actually and they flower every second year. I'll try and get a shot of a um, flower of one that's still got a bit of colour on it. They're a yellow flower. But um, yeah, not a bad little stand there and amongst the bush. Again, you can see the eye bark and trees like that which predominate in the um, goldfield areas in Victoria, in many areas. This is a good example of the flower and the grass tree. This one's flowered obviously a bit later than most, but I'll walk up and show it to you more closely. Very impressive flowers every two years. Well, Ray and I are trying a different spot now. As you can imagine, looking for gold, you're just going to keep trying different spots until you um, hopefully find a, a piece or two. So we found this spot here with lots of muller keeps and um, considerable ac activity. So we're going to give this a go um, for a while and see if we can find something. Yeah, certainly... Um, turn this up but these are a typical example of alluvial gold fields shallow holes dug down to the gravel and then the gravel would have been processed somewhere in a puddler nearby but anyway we'll see how we go you've got to be careful um, with these holes you don't stand in the middle of them because they could sometimes be much deeper than they look we're actually doing a bit of coin and relics detecting because we're pretty tired um, and I've dug this um, signal and out has popped this old um, um, salt shaker, I think it is. 
it's an absolutely um, great nick. I don't know whether it's old or not, but certainly it could be fairly old. Um, but it looks to be in um, perfect nick, not cracked or anything like that. So um, we'll take it home and have a clean it up. Now this is a great find. I haven't found one of these for a long time. Um, it's a Rising Sun badge. Probably Second World War. So that's a fantastic find. I'm really pleased with this one. I'm a bit surprised this is lying around because I would have thought this would be quickly snapped up. Well, I've just had another find here. It's a World War II military button. It's not all that um, good condition, but I'll clean it up. But you can see the Australia on it. So that's another nice find. You beauty. On to the next. And this find here has got to be the dirtiest sixpence I've ever found. It's barely recognisable as such, but I'll clean it up and hopefully it'll come up well. Well, this find here out of this little hole here is a um, sixpence. It rang up at 12.47. So I'm actually wondering whether there could be another coin down there because it's very, very high just for um, a silver sixpence. There might be a penny or something like that with it. Let's have a look. Well, I don't know what it is about this place in sixpence. This, this is the third. The third silver coin. It's much cleaner, this one. It'll be interesting to see what years they come out as. Well, you'd never guess what this is going to be. This is yet another sixpence. That's four of them in this spot here. Wow. <laughs> I was gobsmacked at how many sixpences are coming. Well, it's day two, um, and out here with um, Basil out doing some detecting this morning, and um, just found this really nice example of a puddler here. So this is obviously a very rich area, and um, probably lots of gold was recovered and processed here, um, because puddlers are operated by um, people who process the gold for a fee. Very nice example too. I won't wander up and have a have a closer look. You see the central bit where the post hole was. There's a slight depression still there actually. This is actually a very good example. You don't see too many and as good a nick as this. Just go around the other way and see if we can get a bit of a shot of it with the sun behind me. There it is there, you can see the where the central bit and the, and the goal would have been puddled and the, the um, lower bits. Good morning, it's Willow here. It's just a few minutes after I shot that picture of the paddler. I was actually making my round very slowly around it and I've detected a little specimen off the side of the paddler here, which um, I'm showing you now. Uh, it's probably only sort of a very small amount of gold in it, but still it's a find. I'll just sort of zoom in and show you hopefully a better picture. It came from about 20 centimetres. Just a little bit of um, gold in the quartz. Hopefully that'll turn out shiny there. Focus on the camera's not working too well again. Yeah, so that's a nice start. You beauty. These are work, working the puddler.
There's a puddler where I found a small specky about an hour ago. See how he keeps his coil close right on the surface? That's what you've got to do. Maximise your depth. It was there, I had that small noise. Some of the gold's been coming from this redder clay sort of soil um, in the mullet keeps. Quite nice colours. Certainly a lot of activity here 160 years ago. Oh well, keep digging. Here's a bearded dragon here, little fella. Mm, with this log. He's just watching me. Oh, he's darted back deeper into the log. Probably doesn't particularly like blokes coming with blue cameras. There we go, he's getting a bit curious now. Hidden behind that weed. There you can see him there. I was thinking I haven't really seen a lot of wildlife because it's been pretty warm during the day now. Well I just found my second piece of gold for today. Um, it sounded like a piece of junk, honest to goodness. I would have thought it was, but it turned out to be this reasonable nice little slug of gold. Not bad at all. Probably about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 of a gram, I'd say. It's quite a solid little piece. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, goes to show you just got to dig every noise because it can be gold, even though I thought for sure this was going to be junk. It's quite late in the afternoon. I've dug that's that much junk. Um, I'm still detecting and um, I found my third piece of gold of the day. So quite a flat little piece but still gold. Probably about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a, a gram in weight. A lot of them are pretty small but still they're good finds. All gold is good. So on to the next hopefully. Well I've come across this um, puddler here. It's on yet another one where they're processing, processing the rich alluvial gravels. You can see the sort of centre bring like a donut in the middle there of all the flowers on it. It's outflow. Flew through this channel here. They would have used water from the creek and it's flowed back to part of the creek there and probably back into the creek after it had been processed. So I'll give this a thorough going over. Well, the end of a very satisfying day in the gold fields. Very pleasant at the moment. About eight o'clock. Sun is setting.
anyway hope you've enjoyed today's adventures I'm relaxing in front of a nice fire at the end of the day not a bad day at all thank you again to my viewers and subscribers for watching I really appreciate it and I hope you've enjoyed this um, video until next time happy hunting